Imagine we have a source of water that flows through some pipes until it reaches a sink. Each pipe has its capacity, which is the maximum amount of water that can flow through it. Can we compute the maximum flow, which is the maximum amount of water that can flow from the source? To solve this problem, we can model this scenario using a flow network, a directed graph with capacities associated to the edges. Let's now choose a path from the source to the sink. We can see that the edge from A to B has the lowest capacity, which means that 2 is the bottleneck for the flow along this path. We take note of this flow by visualizing it in a separate flow network on the right. Now we update the capacities on the first graph, which we call a residual graph, removing the flow that went through the graph in the first step. Now we consider a new path, find the bottleneck and add the new flow to the graph on the right. Once again, we compute the residual graph. At this point, we realize that there are no more paths available. The flow we got is 4, but this is not the maximum flow possible. This was caused by an unlucky choice of path. Here we can see that by choosing different paths, we can get the maximum flow for this network, which is 6, given by the sum of the two selected paths. The idea behind the ford fulkerson algorithm is to avoid this problem by adding backward edges to the residual graph. In this way, we can undo the choice of bad paths, which do not lead to a maximum flow. So, let's go back to the first step. Let's choose the same path as before, but this time we add backward edges with zero capacity before computing the residual graph. We add backward edges also in the flow graph on the right. By doing so, we are highlighting the fact that the flow can also move back through each edge. Now we can compute the residual graph. Let's do the same with the second path. Once again, 2 is the bottleneck for the flow along this path. Let's add backward edges to both graphs. Now we compute the residual graph. Now we can see that there is a path that before was not available. The backward edge from E to B allow us to undo the bad choice that we made in the first step. We add this new flow to the previous one and add backward edges. Now we compute the residual graph. At this point, there are no more paths available. The algorithm stops with a flow of 6. Is there a way to prove that 6 is the maximum flow possible? Let's introduce the idea of cutting a graph into two subsets, one containing the source and one containing the sink. The capacity of a cut is given by the sum of the capacities of the edges crossing the cut, starting from the partition containing the source. It is possible to cut the graph in different ways. In this context, we are interested in a minimum cut because of the max-flowing cut theorem, 
that states that the maximum flow is equal to the minimum cut. We can conclude that 6 is the maximum flow possible for this network.